Greetings. This is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, uh, this is the last of the series on Jubilee. So here we are, Jubilee Part 7, Jesus, the Kinsman Redeemer. And we'll go back to Leviticus 25, verses 23 through 25. The land, moreover, shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine. For you are but aliens and sojourners with me. Thus, for every piece of your property, you are to provide for the redemption of the land. If a fellow countryman of yours becomes so poor he has to sell part of his property, then his nearest kinsman is to come and buy back what his relative has sold. So this goes back to our previous post, uh, and it was discussed how Satan is currently in charge of the world. God has given him authority since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, and the world is effectively leased to Satan. God holds the title. God's the, God's the owner. That's been made abundantly clear in Scripture. And so, you know, for those who want to follow back up, do a little brush, brush up, clean up on Satan in control for now, part six, click on this... Uh, link here you can go back to that post get the details for that uh deuteronomy 10 verse 14 the heavens indeed the highest heavens belong to the lord your god as does the earth and everything in it and that's just one of many verses that states the fact everything's god's and he's leasing things and you know it's kind of like when we die too we can't take it with us Uh, I know we have these titles and these deeds that say we own land and we own a piece of the property and housing and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in the final analysis, it's temporary. It's not eternal. And when we go, we go back uh, without anything. So God has the papers of ownership when it comes to the earth. He has the, he has the, he holds the, the, the title, the deed, Revelation 5, verse 1, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. So I take it John's talking about the Father, what he has in his right hand. Uh, Leviticus 25, verse 24, thus for every piece of your property you are to provide for the redemption of the land. God the Father has his price for the land of earth or the arets. Because of sin, the land is cursed and there's a cost. God wants his payment in the currency of sacrificed innocent blood. That's how he takes his payment. The next verse, Leviticus 25, verse 25, if a fellow countryman of yours become so poor he has to sell part of his property, then his nearest kinsman is to come and buy back what his relative has sold. So Adam lost the deed to the earth because of sin. Adam was unable to pay the price with his guilty blood. And no other person since Adam has been able to redeem the land since. Well, save one. We're going to get to him. All humanity is guilty and slaves to sin. And we're unable to pay for the land. Humanity does not have access to the land deed until the scene in heaven, Revelation 5. It just wasn't time. Uh, Jesus is then fulfilling his role as a kinsman redeemer. Jesus is related to Adam. You can get that from Luke 3, verses 23 through 38. and uh, See how Jesus is linked to Adam. And he's a kinsman to the man, Adam, who lost the land. So Jesus can come back and pay for it, the land. Revelation 5, verse 7, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. He would be Jesus. Him would be the Father. And he came, Jesus came, and took the book out of the right hand of him, the Father, who sat on the throne. And Jesus wants possession of the papers. Revelation 5, verses 9 through 10, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain 
and purchased for God with your blood, again, innocent blood, men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. So the scene in heaven, Revelation 5, is consistent with the customs of a kinsman redeemer, see Ruth 4. And in both in both scenes, they're conducted before the court and elders as witnesses before God. Uh, and that's what's taking place in Revelation 5, and that's the scene in Revelation 4. Boaz, kinsman redeemer, would be the one. Uh, he goes and gets some land and Ruth at that time. So with his death... Jesus purchased humanity, his bride, from the bondage of sin. He has access to the scroll. Christ is sinless and innocent. So Ruth 4 works as a type for what is going to happen in Revelation 5 with the role of the kinsman redeemer in Ruth 4, Boaz, and Jesus in Revelation 5. So they're parallels. Um Ruth 4 was a peak into the future. Now, you know, as of December 2021, this hasn't happened yet. It's getting closer. Uh, Also, check out Jeremiah 32, verses 6 through 15, for land purchasing and redemption document customs. Now, in this case, we're going to focus on Jesus' case in Revelation 5. The conditions for the redemption of the earth are tribulation, so seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. And this this is what, you know, when Jesus takes that piece of paper, now granted, he is Jesus and he's going to win, but that offers him the opportunity for the conditions for the redemption of the earth. So earth is going to go through seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls, and that's what it's going to take to defeat Satan to reclaim the deed to the earth. Um, He's going to get it done. Now, the world may not think so, so it's kind of the world v. Jesus. You know, as the world would handicap it, Jesus is the underdog. Well, I'll take Jesus in the points right now. We know how this is going to end. Um, And Jesus, a man, and his bride, the church, will fulfill God's command in the Garden of Eden. And specifically what I'm going to focus on here in Genesis 1, verse 28. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the portion that is the most relevant, uh, Jesus and, and his bride, the church, will subdue the earth. They will rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and every living thing that moves on the earth now. And there will still, well, in, in, in that sense, t- true, There, uh, this will also be true. There will be aspects of humanity who will survive the uh, tribulation and will they will be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, they will be under the subject of Christ and the, the bride, his church. So in that sense, every aspect of it will be fulfilled. So... Uh, you know, closing out the the series with Jesus, the kinsman redeemer, and he's the fulfillment of this. He is he is the he is the pinnacle of the idea of jubilee in 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 the Bible. And, and at some point, it's coming. It's coming. So, if you guys enjoy this, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. This will be categorized under Jubilee. And again, this series was originally posted six years ago, 2015. One one quick note. I did speak, uh, I guess it's been six years now. I doubt he remembers it. Uh, I did speak with Dan uh, Goodwin, uh, God's Final Jubilee. And... He, for you folks who are interested in this, in this, I'd highly recon- recommend this book. He goes into incredible detail. I just hit the cliff notes of this. A lot of scholarship and just looking at concepts of time and jubilee and sabbaths and sabbatical sets and so forth. 
And six years ago, he was like, yes, get it out. Tell people he's coming soon. And, you know, there was a real sense of urgency with him and, you know, do whatever it takes to get, to get the word out. And here we are six years later and holy cow, look at the world and how it's changed in these six years. So I haven't spoken with him in six years, but he had a, a serious sense of urgency six years ago. I can only imagine what he's, what he thinks now. And he's not the only one. Um, my has this planet changed in the last six years and we are arguably in the seventh seventh year of a sabbatical set of seven and you know arguably i mean we're just running out of time i mean we're all running out of time in some in some sense anyway we all get a little older every day and we're all terminal one way or another uh this body's not inheriting eternity it will be transformed and changed whether it's resurrected or whether or not it's transformed raptured changed as first corinthians 15 talks about so ready for that to come whenever that may be so if you would uh if you wanted to follow up receive notification every time we put something out type your name here in the email address um hit subscribe. You'll be uh, notified every time we send something out. Um, and then also you can scroll down these uh, lists of categories over here in the far right column and um, hitting the topics uh, we've written about. Things are changing quickly. So at any rate, appreciate you guys following along. Hope you enjoyed the series. Uh, may pull some stuff up from uh, Christmas done some old stuff on Christmas or I may just start a new series on Christmas or what we celebrate as known as Christmas. I think Jesus was born in the fall. That's a discussion for another day. Maybe I'll pull some of that stuff up. Um, who knows? Any rate, we'll be doing something. Uh, thanks for following along. Wish everybody a great day. Take care. Bye.